Oh man, this real estate industry is absolutely changing. And as agents, you feel a lot of fear. You have a lot of people changing things up, getting new licenses, doing a bunch of different things. And I'm here to tell you that's okay. But I also wanna bring a little bit of calm to you today to talk about how we, as a unit, in this real estate industry can survive and be great agents and come out on the other side ahead. So stay tuned, I'm gonna dive in. What's up guys, Jeremy Kane, Real Estate Agent Playbook. I'm gonna get right into this one because I know a lot of agents are feeling the market and they're feeling the change, kind of freaking out, looking maybe at doing something different, um, changing brokerages, uh, changing teams, you know, getting a, a job and, you know, maybe as an escrow agent or something along those lines to supplement. And I'm here to tell you that you can absolutely make this work and take full advantage of this as a real estate agent. My goal is to keep you in the game that real estate agent, you know, success rate is 87% usually fail within the first five years, according to Tom Ferry. We want to make sure that you are in it. And I'm here to help you and walk you along any step of the way. If you feel this panic, and you can't watch this video anymore because I'm scaring you or whatever, book a call with me. I'd be happy to chat with you and we can make a game plan for you that's all about survival, adaptability, and making this work. So let's talk about it. The 87% failure rate. This is something that in the good times was out there. So I'm sure that, you know, we've heard 60,000 people, 100,000 people have gotten out of the industry, whether it's lenders or agents or, you know, title people or whatever. We don't want to be one of those people and you don't have to be. What you do have to be is adaptable to beat those stats and change and right now is huge, right? So as we, you know, kind of take all this in in the changing market, boom, here comes the NAR lawsuit about, you know, buyer agent compensation and people leaving the realtor boards and all of this. Let's let this play out before we say 1 million agents are gonna leave realtor board, NAR is not gonna exist. Let's let it play out. But in the meantime, as an agent, you better be figuring out how you're going to demonstrate your value. Because regardless of, you know, what the standard commission is, which I didn't think we were allowed to talk about, um, but they seem to be, you know, dialing it into the standard of zero. You know, if you listen to some people reporting on the court case, um, we need to figure out what the value is. People will pay for value. People pay for service. And so as a buyer's agent, especially with the changing you know, seen, you need to make sure that you are providing value. What's your value stack? Just like when agents come talk to me about eXp and the Wolfpack, our value stack's unmatched, right? If, you, if you're considering moving brokerages, book a call, stop the video right now, book a call with me, reagentwolfpack.com, and we can talk because there is no better value stack in the industry than ours. So we need to take that mindset and build it into our production business. And if we can do that, we can dial in exactly what it is and we can show why we're getting paid. Whether it's negotiating with the buyer, negotiating with the listing agent or the seller, um, we can say, okay, this is what I'm bringing to the table. This is why it would benefit you to pay a buyer's agent compensation. And this is what I'm charging. So once you have that standard um, within your value stack, you can, you can utilize that. So in this slower time, I challenge you, dial in your value stack. What are you doing for listings? What are you doing for buyers? What makes you different? What's your why? What's your story? Because it's all about storytelling. So honestly, I'm not concerned about the NAR lawsuit because I'm providing value. This is my business. I'm gonna obviously operate within the rules and the laws and things like that. But I know that I have to show up and provide value. Just like when the iBuyers entered the market, like I had to provide value because that was definitely an easier route. A couple of clicks, maybe a couple more percent they were charging. You know, but they're making good offers on houses at some point in their their tenure. Um, and I had to, you know, step that up. And I still became one of the top listing agents in that time where sellers had options because it was all about value. It was about how I marketed properties, how I communicated. Right. Because here's the deal. Some people don't want to be communicated with. Some people don't want to deal with people. Those people are going to go the iBuyer route if it makes sense financially. And there are some people that absolutely won't. I wanna meet those people. I wanna to talk to those people, talk to those humans and make that value come through. So just work on your value. I would spend less time watching about what's going on in the court case because you do not control what's gonna happen or what that's gonna look like. Keep your head down, get to work, provide that value stack, and you will certainly be grateful for that on the other side of this. 
Next, we have to talk about, you know, what is causing this? Why are transactions down 30 or 40 percent? Why is NAR coming out saying they'll probably be down another, you know, 4,000 sides nationwide next year? That's crazy because I thought the interest rates were going to come down and everyone is going to rush the market and we're going to have a, you know, feeding frenzy and all the things. Well, look, it might be a little bit longer. This winter might be a little bit longer. And so as an agent, we need to make sure that we are talking about what the winners are, who the winners are. I talk about this all the time, but what makes sense in a high interest rate, low inventory market? Is your market affordability way up there? And, you know, okay, let's talk to investors. What are investors talking about? Oh, investors are looking at midterm rentals. Great. Like, let's get educated. Let's read some books on midterm rentals. Let's dive into that model because if that's where the winners are you need to be there as an agent and you know i love the niche market i love all of that stuff but this is exactly the time where if your niche is dried up you have to find a new one you have to build a new pillar and that's my kind of mantra moving forward for all agents agents in my group who i coach and mentor for free um or agents that i'm talking to right who are just friends of mine in the industry like let's dial in our systems and processes dial in our value stack but then let's start different streams like let's let's get creative right now who are the winners how can i be of service to my clients and it might be just a different funnel right it might just be a different program or a bro broker rebate if that's allowed in your state and diving into where are the people coming from, where are the people that are actually in the market coming from? And if we can do that, we're absolutely ahead of the game. Dial in a new funnel. Who knows, on the other side of this, you could have another income stream or two based because you know you have this part over here, your business, your 85%, this is where your time spent, but you're consistently delivering on client journey and client experience retention, referrals, whatever your business is over here that's worked in the past, I'm not saying abandon ship. I'm saying get that dialed in perfect so that when the faucet does turn back on, that's where they're coming from. However, there is faucets. There's homes buying, trading hands every single day. And where are those people coming from? What's that faucet that's turned on that maybe you could just get a little bit of the flow and change your business. So if you're interested in that, if you like what you hear, throw me a like or subscribe. I give information like this all the time. I built my business pretty much organically and I bring everything that I do to you in this format on this channel or on the podcast. So do all the things, share the show, um, share the YouTube link. It's all okay. Do all the things and let's make this happen. The next thing you need to be careful of in this new society is the tech overwhelm, right? As an agent right now, as a sphere, you know, trainer and, you know, live by my sphere, die by the sphere. <laughs> That's funny. Um, I, I must have that CRM dialed in. So I'm taking some time to get better at my CRM. I'm taking some time to dial it in, make sure that the campaign, so to speak, that they're on or their path that they're on, their journey within that is all, everybody's kind of in the right lane so that there's no confusion. Everybody's getting, getting the perfect marketing and everything that I've tailored towards them. And then I'm diving into AI, right? And I'll tell you right now, ChatGPT can probably eliminate three to four different subscriptions that you have that you're paying for that you may not even know you're paying for if you take one thing from the book shift that i've never read but i know what you do is you look at your bank statements and see what are those automatic recurring payments that you don't live you know need anymore this is of utmost importance right now because every single website you go to every single service you use is 9.99 a month 9.99 a month or a hundred dollars per year and then it auto renews out of nowhere right and we don't even use it anymore I know for a fact that AI and ChatGPT can absolutely eliminate three to five of those in my business right now. So I'm gonna embrace that tech. ChatGPT, AI, not really up your alley right now. That's okay. I would challenge you, I would tell you, even the industry leaders, the people that are at the top of eXp, the people that I saw spoke at eXpCon, they are still in the very infant stages of AI. And so there is still time for you to get into it, look at it, use it as a tool, a great resource for AI is an agent in my downline, Adam Gillespie, look him up, Adam G303, give him a shout out there. But he is absolutely in this every day using it for some of the gurus who have teams that are using it and sending them to training and then trying to bring that information to you. Adam is in it every day and he's absolutely changed my business in the short amount of time that he's talked to me about, you know, the 
tenth of the knowledge that he actually has moving forward and he's updating his game every single day so don't be scared of the tech right but also don't go down the road oh i need i need leads so boom here we go those lead programs i'm telling you right now are worn out just as you know close transactions are down so are the leads how do i know zillow just raised their you know referral fee on the flex program to 40 percent in our market so now you have to give Zillow 40%. Then you have to pay the, the brokerage who's paying Zillow or has that partnership with Zillow and putting a lot on the line for them. And next thing you know, you're selling houses for 20% of the commission. And oh yeah, buyer's agent commission just got a whole lot harder and a whole lot more confusing. And it's not an auto draft anymore. And so what are we really looking for these leads for, right? It's about dialing in your sphere, talking to people, having conversations and providing that value. If you do these things, if you take this time Q4, where it's going to be seasonally slower anyways, on top of, you know, a crazy amount of interest rates and inventory and all the news, take this time to really dial it in. Take this time to set your goals, but set short term goals, right? Drives me crazy that all of a sudden we're talking about setting goals in September now and goal setting and all this stuff because there's nothing else. What that tells me is that those people have written off Q4 of this year and they're hoping that, you know, they're waiting for the interest rates to lower. So they're like, let's set goals for 2024. No, here's the deal. On this channel, we will go through goals. We will talk about my process. We can even do a live workshop. If you want that, give me a uh, goal setting workshop comment below or send me a DM on Instagram, the RE Agent Playbook, and I will create a goal setting workshop. We can do it live when the time comes but if you're setting your goals for 2024 and you're forgoing 70 for 25 percent of 2023 you're missing the boat and so that's where you have to really dial it in see who you're aligned with are you aligned with the right people if you are not i promise you that there is an alignment within our group within the wolf pack mike Schrard, louis galt myself that will absolutely change your business forever so i would love to talk to you about that as always, if you're just like, Jeremy, I have no idea what you said, but I want to talk to you. I want more of that sauce. Um, book a realtor game plan call. We don't have to talk about EXP and that. But if you do have interest and you're thinking about changing brokerages, boom, hit me up. Would love to help you uh, make that decision and see if it's a good fit here or help you find another one. P.S. My dad's a managing broker of another company. Um, and I, I absolutely think that the right fit for a broker is of utmost importance right now because if you're not leveling up every single day and you're not surrounded by the very best in the industry, you are putting yourself at risk of being one of those 87%. So I hope this helped. Please share the show. Let me know what you think of the podcast. Let's get some more conversations going in that community. And I can't wait to talk to you soon. As always, like, comment, subscribe. We'll catch you next time.